Hi guys, and welcome back, and today we'll build the diorama base for the Jag Panther and its crew dio. And just to put some context around it, this isn't going to be a meticulously measured up and well planned diorama base. I've done everything by eyesight because my primary motivator was to replicate the scale of the photo, so I really wanted to be able to try and reproduce that. But at the same time trying to keep it looking reasonable uh, when viewing in person. So uh, it was a little bit tricky and there's probably some imperfections there, I happily admit that. But uh, I think it's a, well I hope it will be an interesting video for you to watch and we'll get stuck into it straight away. So I thought I'd take you through the build of the dio base right from the very start. So I'm always quite keen for the for the base to be nice and just it's all personal preference but I like the nice beaded sort of wooden frame and I'm also operating within constraints that it has to fit inside the display cabinet that I've got so the base can't be any bigger than 38 centimeters by 28 centimeters and, and realistically for this Dio, I probably needed it to be a bit deeper, so maybe another five centimeters would have would have helped. But anyway, you work within the constraints that you've got. So um, initially, just um, go ahead and make a picture frame. Basically, cut the four pieces of um, of beading and join those together. I put that on top of a three mil thick MDF base and have the base underneath the edge of the of the beading and glue that down and then I put some rails on the inside so that I can fit the foam in there because I've got another requirement aside from the size is also the weight because they're just like glass shelves on pretty small rails that they sit on. So put the foam in and then glue everything in place and leave that to set for you know at least 24 hours. And with this one in particular I wanted to have some edging around it and particularly across the back of it. I wanted it to look in person as if it had almost just been cut through. So I've got sort of the silhouette of the back of the house to close off the back of the diorama. I'll let you be the judge of how well you think that went towards the end. I, I think I'm happy with it, but, but I'm not quite sure. So just a little bit of fiddling around to get the sides in place and make sure it all sticks together and is level and the like. So that took a little bit of time, but ultimately I think it came up pretty well. So the next thing, once that was all dry and I stained it up with two coats of, I think it's mahogany, the stain, I was then to rough out basically where the house sits and the curve of the road. And the reason one, the right hand side is built up higher than the left hand side is that there's a gentle slope in the picture from right to left and the house seems to be in a little bit of a hollow. So I needed to build up the right hand side and just use another piece of foam to stick on top of that and then carve that into to give the appropriate sort of gentle slide down to where the house is. So once the uh, foam was all in place and carved into the sort of right shape, I just used wood filler um, from the hardware shop, which is pretty cheap and sets nice and hard to get the general contour of the of the road and the ground. And then on top of that put, um, I think it's called Mr. Clay, which is an air drying clay. It's nice and white and uh, very malleable. And spread that across and concentrate on getting some texture in the ground area and keeping it reasonably flat for the road surface. And then just sort of tinker as I'm prone to do and sprinkle in bits of small uh, fine sand and, uh, and the like to see if I could get some texture across the base. And then I just use the airbrush to spray on a dark brown base coat and seal it all up and uh, give a good foundation then to do all the toning and uh, lots of different colours involved on the road etc. So the rest is pretty self-explanatory, so I'll speed it all up. It's always difficult to know how much of this sort of stuff to show uh, when it's all much of a muchness, but really it was just a matter of spraying down some um, wooden scenic glue and then sprinkling lots of different turf and grasses and, and little clumpy bits and getting that right and building up the little pile of rubbish on the side of the road, of garden rubbish, leaves and branches and the like. And then with the road itself, I, I probably sprayed seven or eight different shades of brown and tan across that and then just as I as I love to use my um, chalks did a lot of dusting to try and get that sort of uh, modulated color with lots of variation in it and uh, you know, I think it's come up reasonably well.
And then finally, just to try and bring everything together, I used the MIG Pigment uh, European Earth and gave the road a dusting with that. Reasonably light and then came back over it with the airbrush to blow a lot of the surplus away. And I think it uh, toned it down and brought it all together um, quite nicely. And so with the base largely completed, it was on to building the, the house and the tree and the little shrub and the two telegraph poles. I'll apologise right now if the video and the audio haven't been tying up to this point. Um, I had some issues filming this. Um, I had changed my iPhone setting to filming in 4K, but my poor old computer seems to have grown under the weight of all that extra data and uh, made editing this somewhat of a nightmare. So having realised that, I'm really just sticking to still pictures from this point on and I'll try not to um, make that too boring. And uh, it's all pretty obvious, so hopefully you'll get the gist of uh, how it all turned out. So the previous photos that were shown was just sort of me trying to get the depth perception right and the scale of the buildings to match the um, photo. And that was just a little bit of trial and error and really just eyeballing it. And then it was just a matter of um, cutting out the card and gluing that all together, doing the tiling on the roof, which I started off doing with plastic card and uh, cutting out I think there were 800 tiles to do the, the roof and sticking them on one by one, but it was it was a laborious task, but uh, I think it came out quite well in the finish. A little bit of a challenge doing the, I think it's a dormer window and uh, getting that to fit on, and then just doing the window frames, used the same plastic card for that. Had a bit of a challenge with the 45 degree angle, so I've subsequently gone out and bought myself a little mitre box and saw uh, from the hobby shop, which uh, should make future windows a little less wonky. But in the scheme of things, I think it looks okay because it's really a background feature, not a primary feature. Glued all the window frames in with, uh, with super glue and then made up a paste of just normal polyfiller and water mixed together and then spread that over fairly liberally with the brush and cleaned up any of the residue once it had dried later on. The tree was really just a, um, a twig from a gum tree that I had in, found in the backyard and uh, I just sort of had to customise it with the branches so I got the three forks that appears in the photo and this attached the sponge to that with some modelling putty. And then really all I did to the tree was paint the trunk and then uh, spray some wooden scenic glue on the sea sponge and sprinkle the um, same turf as I used on the ground all over it. So as you can see, I had a very detailed plan for the telegraph poles. I just used a wooden skewer and a plastic card, the same card that I'd used for the window frames, a little piece of wire to hold everything together with some super glue. And then I made some, res I think they're resistors, out of uh, polymer clay, which you bake. And uh, I only baked it for about 10 minutes, so it was very firm but not brittle. And then I could cut them down to size, and, uh, and I think they actually came out all right, very fiddly to do. But overall, I think they, they came out pretty well. And then once they were weathered, and a little bit of broken uh, telegraph wire, and a little bit of uh, bird droppings, which I think I might have gone over the top with, but, but perhaps there's lots of birds in that area. Overall, I was pretty happy with the finish. And so that's the base largely finished. I'll um, just follow this with a slideshow uh, of the finished base. Be a little bit of fiddling around with it, the final dressing when I get the tank and the figures on. But largely pretty happy with how it came up. Um, filming again now back in um, 1080 DPI, so having none of the synchronization problems that I had previously. And I do apologize if this hasn't been a very high quality video, but uh, I've learnt from my mistakes and uh, I'll be sticking to 1080 from this point onwards until I get a better computer at least anyway.
So thanks very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and probably looking at two more videos in this series. One will be the final painting and weathering of the tank itself and then the, the final reveal I guess which will be the putting all the components together and the finished product. So I hope you've enjoyed and uh, really appreciate you taking the time to watch. If you've liked what you've seen please uh, give a thumbs up or uh, make a comment. I love reading the comments and uh, respond to all of them and uh, if you're not a subscriber um, take the time to subscribe so you can follow the rest of the series. Thanks so much. Cheers, guys.